Good afternoon. Um, I'm Tom Butcher here at the Zero Project in Vienna. And I'm joined by two really wonderful people. One of them remotely, who I can see, I don't know whether she can see me, uh, who is Kristin Gilger of Arizona State University. And on my right, Evelyn Bretzina, one of the most truly accomplished photographers I've come across and who I've just had the pleasure of being able to show her a wee bit of the United Nations upstairs. I am going to bow out at this stage and pass over to Kristin and Evelyn to have what I'm sure is going to be an absolutely great conversation. But then just five minutes before the end, we are going to look and see how Petra has depicted your conversation graphically, if it lends itself to that. If it doesn't, then we won't. And um, uh, when the five minutes are up towards the end, I'll just say, hey, we've got five minutes, and if we could wrap up. So um, I will start off by saying over to you, Kristin, and then I'm holding the mic for Evelyn. Very good, thank you. Uh, it, good morning for me, uh, good evening for you. Uh, it's really exciting for me to do this. I haven't had the opportunity to meet Evelyn in person, but I certainly follow her brilliant photography. A little bit about her. Um, she is a, a native of Vienna. Uh, since, she's, uh, since about her sixth year, she has lived with brittle bone disease, and she, as you can see, uses a wheelchair. Uh, she worked at the Vienna Red Cross for five years until her health uh, uh, convinced her to retire. And she is a passionate photographer. She has two Instagram accounts, uh, which are very well followed. And she uses her art in a way that I think you'll find really compelling. So, um, and just two, two seconds about me. Um, I'm a professor at the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication at Arizona State University uh, in Phoenix, Arizona in the United States. Um, and I'm also the director of the National Center on Disability and Journalism, which is located at the Cronkite School and how I got connected to this. So Evelyn, we don't have a lot of time, so I wanna just jump in. I wanna ask you just a couple of questions and then we're gonna look at some of your photos. Um, let's start with your story. Can you tell us about your experience with disability? Well, as you said, I've, um, I have the brittle bones disease, but 44 years ago, I was born as a completely healthy child with no, with no visible signs of any problems. And um, uh, I went to primary school uh, with, uh, with the help of crutches and to high school, I already had my wheelchair. I was the only pupil with a wheelchair in this whole building that was full of steps and stairs. Um, and um, it was quite a tough time, but I somehow made it through. And um, well, I was very proud to be able to work at the Vienna Red Cross, where I was treated equally. Uh, I didn't feel that I was disabled or that uh, anyone treated me in any way uh, differently. I was equal, and that was a wonderful experience for me to be not reduced to my uh, disability. And um, yeah, now um, I'm completely depending on the help of others. Uh, I live with a 24 hour caregiver and uh, that's a completely different life again. Uh, I'm not able to work, but I try to be as creative as possible and take photos with my mobile, my cell phone uh, with my left arm. Tell us how you got started taking photos. Uh, it was my father who gave me a camera for my 10th birthday. And he was very passionate about photography as well. And he told me to always use special angles. Um, and the fact that I'm sitting and that I ha even if I could stand, I have only the height of an approximately five-year-old child. I convey a completely different perspective with my photos. And uh, yeah, that's what, I, what I'm trying to use and um, take advantage of. 
Let's let's take a look at a few of your photos. Um, I had a hard time picking some to share because they're all so powerful. Um, and we'll just, um, if we could bring those up and uh, you could just tell us a little bit about each of the photos that we're going to take a look at. And we do have um, caption material, so um, you can read a, a good description of the photos as well. I think someone has the PowerPoint they're going to share. Yes. Absolutely. Can we have the first slide? Won't be a moment, Kristen. We're just... Oh, oh there we go. We're, we're there we go. setting things up. Yeah. So, Evelyn, tell us about this beautiful photo. Well, I'm always on the lookout for courtyards that are wheelchair accessible, and Vienna is full of them. And it's always a pleasure to encounter one of those. And this photo I took, as one can see, in autumn. And I just love the contrast of the white building and the blue sky with the reflecting blue in the windows and the uh, autumnal, autumnal leaves. And you're shooting straight up, correct? Yes, I, I shot straight up. <laughs> because I've always be careful what's going on below um, below me on the surface of my wheelchair. So it's uh, for a change. I want. I love those pictures where I can look up. <laughs> Very good. Let's look at the next one. Here you have the same uh, perspective. Uh, what intri intrigued me to take this photo was because it's in the city center of Vienna, and we have a quite let's say, um, extraordinary color range here, a pink house with turquoise window frames. It makes us feel as if we were, for example, in Italy. And that's why I took this photo. Yeah, and I love this one too, uh, partly because of the colors. The colors are just so beautiful, as you said, but, uh, but it's the perspective in both of these photos where you know most people would just not not see this in the same way that you see it. Is that is that accurate? Well, you have to know, at, for example, at this special place that you have to look up. Normally, you wouldn't. Uh, you would just look straight ahead. And I, uh, as I came by this place a few times, I knew that I had to look up, and so I took this photo. Very good. And let's look at a, the next one, which is a different perspective. It's actually looking down. Yeah, this is one of my, let's say, signature photos, where I uh, take um, my, my feet also as a uh, photographical element into the picture, um, because they are kind of floating over the surface. And here, uh, you can see the sky walking down the stairs, and, uh, and the reflection of my shoes in the glass and the matching color of my shoes and the mosaiced wall. So that just caught my eye and I thought I had to take this picture. And the reflection of your shoes as well. Yes. Yeah. You have two Instagram accounts, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And how are they distinguished from each other? Well, the one which is called Vienna Wheelchair View is, uh, it depicts uh, Vienna the way I see it how I want to present it. I give advice to uh, tourists, to people in wheelchairs, which, um, which sites are worth seeing, which are accessible and which are not. And the other one is more my private um, idea of what I find beautiful. I see. And this picture would be an example of one that would be in which account? Uh, actually, it would be be for both. <laughs> I, I don't remember. I think it's in the second in my private one. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's look at the next one, which I think um, it, it really captures how you see detail. Yes, uh, because um, my autobiography I translated in English because it's only uh, available in German. It's called Crack Me Not and Dandelion. Uh, and I love dandelions. And here you see the sun shining on this single one that's coming 
uh, out amongst those cobblestones, surrounded by those beautiful pink cherry blossoms. And I wanted to show that even though there might be ugly cobblestones, there is always beauty in between. And the next one also is about detail. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, most people would say, well, that's just uh, uh, ugly graffiti, but um, it's, it's a door next to where I live, a shutter lock, and just the red color caught my eye and made me look closer because it's at my eye level, this lock. And uh, I thought this detail would be interesting to show, and I got quite a lot of response. <laughs> what kind of response did you get to this? Well, that um, people tell me they wouldn't have never seen it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's and I think the next one is the same, something that other people might not see. Oh, yes, that's um, a leaf in autumn that's trapped between a glass and a cast iron ornament. And I wanted, I wanted to show the beauty of decay. That's what... That what came, that's what came into my mind when I saw it. The, the pride of this single leaf that decays in, in, in solitude. And it's trapped in the, in the yes. window, correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just, it's, uh, it's, so, it's so beautiful in its detail. Um, let's go to the next one, which also, which I think goes back to what we were talking about earlier about perspective. Yeah, these are two caryatids, uh, which are standing on a quite high pedestal. And I took this photo, as you can see, from a very low perspective, not only because I'm sitting very low, but you can see the toes are quite huge, and the faces in the uh, far ab high above are quite tiny. And uh, I thought it was funny that one of those figures is pointing directly at me with a broken index finger. That's kind of funny with my background story. <laughs> And, and how do you find the subjects for your photos like this? Is it like you're going someplace specifically looking for, you know, beautiful images to capture? Or is it just as you're kind of living your life and you have your cell phone and you say, oh, I want a picture of that? Well, actually, if I'm going to a museum, I know that I will see beautiful uh, motives. But when I go out for a walk, of course, I have my mobile phone, cell phone always with me. And it's not that I'm looking for uh, interesting motives. They just come to me. I don't know why. <laughs> they just come to me. <laughs> okay. And we, uh, we have one more to show. And this one, you'll have to explain to us what this is. It's so beautiful to look at, but I kept looking at it going, I don't know what it is. Actually, it was a bunch of roses in a, gl uh, in a vase. And uh, from my perspective, I could only see the roses from below. And I had the vase in front of me. And I thought, well, why not take a picture of the beautiful stems with the huge thorns in, ma in matching color with the vase? And uh, well, I, that's uh, the perfect example of my different point of view. Yeah, and and it could be a painting. It, <laughs> it's it's so beautiful. Um, Thank you. I think that that's our slideshow, so we can stop sharing if if you want. And then uh, Evelyn, you tell us about your following on Instagram. How did you get started on Instagram, and what kind of following have you built up there? Well, I started about four years ago, uh, with a completely different approach. I always posted three f matching photos. And I found out that it's too much. And um, over the years, I developed my own style, uh, my own diversity in photography, uh, my, my showing different um, uh, places. Uh, and um, I found out that uh, my followers, who are now about 5,500, wanted to see who is the person behind the camera. 
And the more I sh told them about me, the more I showed my life, I make reels as well, where I present places that are accessible, wheelchair accessible, those are the most um, interesting ones for my followers. Why, why do you think that is? Well, I mean, I have, um, I have followers who want to visit Vienna who are in a wheelchair and to get inspired by those pictures or reels, which places they could visit, as well as uh, non-wheelchair drivers, let's say, I, I would say healthy people, uh, who are asking me questions about, uh, can I go here or can I go there? I'm like a, a tourist guide sometimes. <laughs> and I like it. And I also um, talk about accessibility problems. I show them on my channel and I al already had the media reacting to it and I'm quite proud of it. What kind of accessibility issues do you see? Um, well, for example, just recently I visited a cafe which uh, told on, on its uh, web page that it's wheelchair accessible with a mobile ramp and that it has uh, uh, an accessible restroom and when I went there the, the ramp was absolutely no problem that was perfect but uh, the restroom was not well there were no steps but there were normal restrooms for uh, a single person who can stand you couldn't have even w uh, get in with a ch children's wheelchair so I wrote an email to this uh, cafe and ask them to change that and they did and they thanked me for it. You mentioned the media a minute ago. Um, how well do you think disability is portrayed in the media, particularly visually? And what, you know, what do you think the media could do better in terms of portrayal of disability? Well, I have to be fair because during the last one and a half years, I had quite a lot of uh, opportunities to present my story and other topics in the media. And I've always been treated very, very well. Even a, a very passionate radio um, um, reporter kept um, made a story about my life, which uh, got silver at an international festival in New York. And uh, so, um, this is uh, one side. Uh, media always wants catchy stories. Uh, either they are positive or negative. But what I think from my personal experience, uh, I love most social media, in my case, Instagram, because it's in my hands what I want to publish, how I want it to be published, and when. And if it's interesting for the media, they come to me and ask me for an interview. And that's what happens more and more often during the last uh, month. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can be a creator of yes. media. Yes, and, exactly. And with your camera and with your words in a way that, you know, wasn't possible, you know, even, you know, 15 years ago. Yes. Um, uh, when you're when you're doing this kind of work, um, sharing your photos with with people, and it's a, around the world, I believe your followers are. Um, what <laughs> what do you hope to achieve? You talked about you know people coming to Vienna, sharing with them uh, what ac uh, how accessible various uh, uh, places are. But what else do you hope to achieve with your photography and sharing that photography around the world? Well, in the first place, I want people to be more aware of their vicinity, of their surrounding. I want them to see the beauty that surrounds them, even if it's in the most ordinary places. That's my first goal. <laughs> and if this leads to being more observative of situations and changing the perspective, um, in special situations. For example, if someone's lying on the street uh, and it, it could be a drunk or it could be a diabetic. And uh, if people are more observ observing, they would 
maybe rethink, uh, go back, ask if this person needs help, and change something. And I want people to, to be more observative of their surrounding. That's my goal. Now, when we talked earlier, you mentioned um, uh, something else that you hope to achieve. You mentioned an, account, an encounter you had with a child um, who was asking, I think, his or her mother why you were in a wheelchair. Can yes. you talk about that? Yes, that's, of course, that's uh, another issue. Um, I think inclusion starts in our heads. And this encounter was very cute. It was a f about a five or four or five-year-old boy who came to me asking me, why, are you si why can't you walk? And I tried to explain to him in a childlike manner that my bones are too weak and that's why I'm sitting in a wheelchair. And from, from the side I could see that his mom, who was approximately seven, eight, ninth months pregnant, came closer to us and the little boy uh, was asking me, but haven't they seen it on the ultrasound? And I was like, oh my gosh, this word came out from a four-year-old. How could that be possible? And I, I want to raise awareness that uh, little children are indeed able to understand if you explain the situation to them in an age... Um, um, in an in an age appropriate style. Yeah, yeah, I love I love that story. <laughs> um, you know, do you when you when people respond to your photos, do you think that they also are getting a better understanding of, uh, you know, how people live with disability? Yes, definitely. I get lots of responses from all sorts of people who I would have never had the chance to get in contact with uh, from all sorts of uh, jobs, environments, places, countries. And it's, it's very interesting to interact with those people. So um, do you have a favorite en encounter or comment that you got from, uh, from someone who saw your photos? Well, um, it was just recently uh, a girl from uh, Uruguay uh, who uh, came across my, um, my Instagram account because we share the same disease, the brittle bones disease. And uh, <laughs> half a year ago, I started learning Spanish. And uh, so, <laughs> um, and she couldn't speak English. So I was forced to speak Spanish with the s those little skills that I have <laughs> achieved in the meanwhile. And um, she sent me 10 questions like you did. And uh, she wanted me to represent myself and she asked questions in a more childlike manner, of course, or a teenager manner, sorry, teenager manner. But it was so fantastic to interact with a young girl who could be my daughter, actually, <laughs> and, um, and to talk in a language that is new for me and um, to feel that we are on the same wavelength. Yeah, um, and, and, and from another part of the world as well. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what, it, what advice would you have for um, uh, people who, uh, with disabilities who want to embark on a creative endeavor like yours? It doesn't have to be photography, but they want to express themselves in some way. <clears throat> well, um don't let anybody tell you that there are obstacles or boundaries. We, we can overcome all of them. We can ask for help if help is needed. Uh, I also ask for help as I have now my very nice <laughs> guide here who will help, uh, hold my microphone, which I couldn't do by myself. So if you, if you are creative, then live it, show it. Do it as much as you can. There are so many people out there who aren't able to move their arms and legs and they are, pa they are painting the most extraordinary uh, masterpieces. So if they can do it, why should uh, anyone else not be able to do it? 
Yeah, I want to give all of us just a moment to let that sink in because I think it's so, so important. Um, I have one last question for you and then I'm going to leave the last few minutes here. Um, what's next for you? <clears throat> what are, you know, a photo exhibit, a book, another book, um, <laughs> 5,000 more followers on Instagram. What, what's next? Well, I want to stress out that I'm not doing this because I'm behind more followers. Of course, it's flattering, but that's not my main goal. Uh, what's next might be uh, an Insta walk where I can show my favorite places um, of my district where I live and people will, will be with me and I will be their guide and I can give them tips uh, and personally, not via social media, but personally interact with them and show them my vision. And that's what I'm looking forward to very much. Uh, well, I want to be the first one to sign up for that. So um, <laughs> you have to let me know. <laughs> if you um, want to come to Vienna. <laughs> yes, I, uh, that's a goal. I do want to do that someday. Um, I so. so I will turn it back over uh, and, uh, and we can wrap it up. But I want to thank Evelyn for sharing her story with us. Um, I feel very privileged to have uh, been part of this and to um, and to hear and see uh, her beautiful work. Thank you, Evelyn. And thank you very much. And thank you, Zero Project, for inviting me and giving me this one in a lifetime chance. And thank you, dear Kristin, for sending me those most interesting questions and to getting to know you. It was a huge pleasure. A Chris pleasure is all mine. Kristen, thank you so much. Evelyn, thank you so much. And I, I think I think I might have 30 seconds to ask my own question, which is pretty an in, inane question, which is as a kind of um, attempting photographer, would you, what one piece of advice, in addition to the go out and do it advice, would you give? Um, if you're insecure, take 10 pictures of one motive and one will be perfect. Great. Um, well, I'll have to follow that for the, about the next 10 years, I think. Well, I will now hand over to Petra. And um, once again, I'll say thanks once again to both of you, but I'll hand over to Petra. Oh, she's got the microphone, so I'm okay there. Yeah, you can keep the mic. <laughs> well, how brilliant to have such a brilliant photographer right here in the Zero Project uh, conference, bringing creativity to all of us and showing that creativity sometimes is a change of perspective. Um, we saw brilliant pictures. Of course, I cannot replicate them here. Uh, but what I caught was that sometimes you need to look up or you need to look down or just to look at details. So that is what your art is all about. And there was this, what, what caught me really was you said, media tries to catch stories, you are trying to write your own story. And with social media, you're able to do that. And I hope I found both of your Instagram accounts. One is uh, Vienna wheelch Wheelchair View, and the other one is Evelyn Brezina, yeah, as one thing. And on the one, you're showing us uh, accessible locations in Vienna. And I think this is also community building, because you're planning to show it and also to invite others to come and see you there. Um, and on the other one, you said you're trying more the art part, yeah? like the beautiful pictures that you find. And I think both um, goes hand in hand um, to show us how important art and photography being one, photography being one of the art forms is so important in an inclusive environment and an inclusive world. Thank you, thank you very much for your brilliant work. It was such a pleasure to see the pictures. Thank you. Charge. <laughs> Petra, thank you so much. Kristin, thank you so much. Have a good rest of day. Ours is nearly done. And um, thank you, Evelyn, above all. It was a huge pleasure meeting you all. And all the best to you, Kristin. Thank you so much. And so goodbye from us here at the Zero Project. And thank you for everybody, and thank you for our viewers as well. Bye-bye, all.